All right, we're back. We're going to take a look at another kind of chemical reaction. This one is exactly the opposite of synthesis. It's called decomposition. So in a synthesis reaction, two separate things are merging into one to make a brand new compound. In decomposition, it's exactly like what it says. It breaks apart. So we're going to take one compound, and we're going to get a reaction to happen that chemically rips it apart into separate things. Now this one's something that all of you will recognize. Hydrogen peroxide is something that pretty much everyone has in their bathroom and is used at some point. You pour it on, a, say, a cut, and it fizzes and bubbles. We want to see chemically why that is. Hydrogen peroxide, if you were to just leave the lid off in your bathroom, it does this, it just does it slowly, and you don't see it happen over time. It decomposes into water and oxygen gas. So those little bubbles that come off are pure oxygen. Okay, and what's left over is water. Now what's interesting is that hydrogen peroxide in your bathroom is only 3%. What you buy at the store is 97% water already, and only three out of every 100 molecules actually are hydrogen peroxide. Here's what it looks like. H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide is literally a water molecule with an extra oxygen atom attached. And it's kind of unstable. That extra oxygen doesn't really want to be there. It wants to leave. Okay? So if you open up the lid and you let it uh, depressurize, basically, and be exposed to normal atmospheric conditions, one of these oxygen atoms is just going to take off. It's just going to chemically separate, become unbonded, and float away. Here's the way this reaction looks, though. Hydrogen peroxide has this formula. I wouldn't expect you to know that off the top of your head. But you should know water. Water is H2O. And then there's a special one over here. Oxygen gas is one of those diatomic elements. We never find oxygen atoms floating around by themselves in the air because they're too reactive. They're too unstable. They always combine with something. So when pure oxygen gas is present, it's always in pairs. It's always O2. They'll always find a partner to hang out with. So this is water, and this is oxygen gas. Now when I look at that, there's a problem. It's like an oxygen atom just showed up out of nowhere, so we have to balance these amounts. We worked on this earlier. If I put a 2 right here, that really doubles the amount of oxygen I have here, so I have a total of 4 oxygens on the right. So I'm going to put a 2 right there, and now everything balances. So that means 2 moles of hydrogen peroxide produce 2 moles of water, and then those extra oxygen atoms come together to make 1 mole of oxygen gas. Okay, so this is a decomposition reaction. You see that word? You should be thinking one thing breaks apart into separate. Now I'm going to show you this, but I'm going to do it with a lot stronger hydrogen peroxide. So this hydrogen peroxide is 30%. It's like 10 times more concentrated than what you get at the store. Still 70% water, but it's a lot stronger. And I'm going to dump some of this into a little flask. I've got to be careful not to get it on myself, okay? because if I do get it on myself, it actually will react to my skin quite a bit. It's one of those things that can burn you. Now, this right now is probably letting off a few oxygen molecules as we speak. We just don't see it happening. So we need to speed the reaction up. I would also like to show you how much extra oxygen is actually contained within that small amount of liquid. There's a lot of it. So I'm going to try to catch this with some soap. I'm dumping in some dish detergent. Okay, This is nothing special, just liquid soap. But what I would like to have happen is I would like to get I would like to get some sort of film that will kind of capture those oxygen bubbles and you can actually see how many of them exist. So I'm just stirring this up and right now as that's decomposing really slowly, this reaction is happening very slow, I just don't see much going on. A bubble here, a bubble there, but not a whole lot. So I want it to happen all at once. So in comes something new. We're going to add what's called a catalyst. Okay, and the catalyst I'm adding this time is called sodium iodide. Now this happens on occasion. Sodium iodide is a chemical that if I add, it doesn't affect this reaction at all. It does not get involved. But it does speed the reaction up. Okay, it's kind of like adding some activation energy. It just kicks it off and gets it going faster, but it doesn't actually become part of the reactants or the products. So when you see something written over an arrow, you can pretty much ignore it as far as the reactants and products are concerned. It's just something we need there to make the reaction go. So I'm going to dump this in and we'll see if we can get this reaction to happen. When I dump it in, the reaction should speed up and you should see how much oxygen was really attached to those water molecules. Now you notice in a couple of things here, foam just keeps coming out and coming out. There's lots and lots of oxygen coming out of this thing. It just keeps growing and growing. 
we also see some steam. This is releasing enough energy that it's actually boiling the water that was in that hydrogen peroxide. That's why we see steam coming out. We would call this an exothermic reaction because it releases a lot of energy in the process. Okay. What I want you to see though, just from that small amount of liquid, how much oxygen is actually attached in there. Keep in mind, that's still 70% water and only 30% hydrogen peroxide. Okay. But that's an example of a decomposition reaction that we'll see in chemistry. If you see the word decomposition, think one thing breaks apart into separate things.